All right, Mac Hughes wins on a playoff. Uh, got a lot of guys in the mix, but no one through the finish line. That was kind of a disappointing finish. Did you uh, get to watch that, Blake? Yeah, I watched all, uh, most of the back nine. Um, obviously, we had <clears throat> Grillo on the card. Um, we also had a small bet on Straka that we didn't post on the card, but uh, we were rooting for Straka, obviously, in the playoff. But Grillo, man, he had that five-footer. And I was like, all right, make this. We're in business. Of course, he misses and then makes a fucking triple on the bar five next hole. Even after the five-foot birdie miss, if he just made a par there, he's right there. Um, yeah, I really thought Grillo was going to win going into that back nine. Yeah, it turns out he probably needed uh, 17, obviously, but that would have put him at 16 if he pars that par five. But that was a really easy hole. He should have easily parred it. And then um, and the five-footer on, on 13. That he should have got. Yep. Um, so yeah, that was tough. The five footer, I mean, that was for the solo lead at 16 under. Yeah. And he still had 14 and 15 ahead of him. So at that point, I thought he he really had a good chance. I mean, coming to the week, I was actually really high. And I might text you a couple of times. Like I have a feeling Grill is willing winning this thing. Um, but yeah, what are you gonna do? The guy makes an eight. I don't know how that's even possible. I don't, you know, he he puts one in the lip of the bunker that's plugged, and then he fires it. And then the, the chip that I mean that was a tough <laughs> shot. The chip was the inexcusable one. Which chip? The one that he bladed over the green. That looked like me. He had three chips. <laughs> uh yeah. Obviously, he nothing he could do about the bunker shot. I mean, he was just plugged right into the lip of the bunker. That was fucked. He could have hit a better shot. He could have been more conservative with the approach shot, though. Was he did was that ball stepped on though? Oh yeah, they heard that. It was stepped on. That was bullshit. The second, yeah, the second one. So he he hit a bad drive, but he and you up. know with Grillo, like things go bad. He's just he's just motherfucking everybody, yeah. <laughs> and that that's when it goes bad with Grillo. And you see when he finally got the ball in the hole, he did like celebration thing. I was like, not the time for this fucking bullshit, man. <laughs> yeah, the the so he got out of the bunker, went sideways, and then that was just the worst chip I've ever seen a pro make. I that's literally what I would do. I mean, truly, yeah, I've done that a bunch of times. Just a blade of screen side chip, um, you know, try to get cute with it and fire it over the green. I can't believe he did that. Uh, missing the five footer, you expect, but you know, that's yeah, that you're gonna tough. take that with Grillo. Um, all right, so we now it's Grillo, we're all over the fucking leaderboard, and then we had Keegan who shot a 64. Kind of expected him to fall back on Sunday, but um, you never know with these events, um. And then we also had small pieces on Straka and Burmeester, um, which are great fucking bets. Never in a, ne never thought Burmeester was going to win at all, but I did think Straka was going to win when it got down to the last three, four holes. And fucking Mac Hughes, this fuck, he's like Cam Weasel Light, man. I can't yeah. even put Spieth in that their, their category anymore because he doesn't do it as much anymore unless it's in the President's Cup, I guess. But, like, this guy is making pars left and right. Speed ain't making those 10 footers. No. Uh, uh, yeah, that was ridiculous. He, there was a couple of times where he sh easily should have bogeyed, especially on um, 18 and regulation. I mean, he gets a, a free line of sight drop, which I don't know how much it affected it. He didn't take that drop. He didn't take it? No, he kept the ball where it was. Okay. Um, but then but he, he gets he is blasted over the fucking green and gets fucking Saturday and Sunday. Did you see Saturday? No, he did the same thing. Did the same thing, got a free drop. He was in the rough. Well, like it's not really rough, but it's like fringe ish. A downhill lie. He gets a free drop. Is putting from the fringe from 40 feet, drills the putt to go to to go to minus 14 going into Sunday. And then same thing happened here. I know he was still out like 90 feet away, but you know how I feel about those hospitality <clears throat> tents. If that hospitality tent wasn't there, that thing is like 50 yards over the green. And that's why I hate them. I mean, like people people take advantage of them and they fire them into intentionally. I, I always said to you, you should have to take a penalty if you hit into the thing. Just don't hit it at the fucking tent. Yeah. But it did. yeah, that was that was bullshit. I knew he was making the four footer or whatever it was. And the one that he shouldn't have made was that 10 footer. I think it was 16 or 15, but he didn't even play great down the stretch. The par five where he went rough to bunker to fairway to 20 feet made the 20 footer. That was a killer. That was unbelievable. Yeah, it was very weasel-esque. 
Yeah, it was bullshit. And the, yeah, he's like the. But that's what he is. I mean. Yep, that's what he is. And you do you read anything into the uh, President Cup? Not snubs, but I mean the two guys who won this week are two guys who were probably thirteen and fourteenth guy on the President's Cup team. Um, I can't, I didn't really understand why Fox wasn't there. Really confused by that whole thing. He had a great season. I know he started to play bad towards the end. So I don't know about the snub on Fox. Uh, and he fit the course really well at Quail for Fox. I mean, no surprise Fox wasn't there. I wasn't really surprised Mac Hughes. I think he's just one of those. Yeah, but didn't he have a top five at the U.S. Open there? Something like that? I thought he was top five at the – was that Tory? Okay, maybe it was, yeah. Um, but, like, with Mac Hughes, it's like you take Mac Hughes or you take uh, – Who's another guy? Cbez. I mean, same fucking guy. Yeah, but don't you, if you're if you're Hughes. I'm not saying it was a snub, but if you're Hughes, aren't you saying I should have went over there, Cbez? Or yeah, you no, know, he definitely should say that. But I mean, do we really want another Canadian on the fucking Presidents Cup team? They fucking sucked. No, we don't. We want none. But <laughs> nope, but the, I'm saying the guys felt like they were snubbed. We saw it last year too, like when Billy went at Wentworth. It was right at that like week before. Yeah, Billy didn't get snubbed. I saw but he thought he that. did. I was going to comment. He didn't no, get he didn't. Get, so my point is he's like 17th in the rankings. Right. My my point isn't that they I get your point. Yeah. That they think they did. Yeah. Didn't Billy say last year he thought he should have been considered? Well, he was fucking wrong. Yeah, he was wrong. But he <laughs> it's a self-perception thing. The only reason why he's there this year is because fucking four guys left. <laughs> oh, I know. And now, now he's the spokesman of the team. <laughs> Um, what do you think of Sep? I mean, is that just like, should he have stuck one of those on the two playoff holes? Maybe, but that was a tough hole. Yeah, that was a good birdie by Mac. He got it to the right side of the, uh, you know, if you're on the right side of the fairway there, you had a much better angle coming in. If you're kidding from the left where Sep was, there's really no way to get it close. Yeah. It was a good man. shot, yeah. And that I, sucked, man. I went, we really needed a win there. I knew he was sticking that thing, too. I knew it. Uh Fuck yeah! So, it is what it is. But we were all over the leaderboard, just peppering it. The, I mean, sucks we even not had to Buckley go. you back to the top five. Back to the top twenty, yeah. I thought Buckley back to the top five. No, nineteenth. Oh, didn't he have a monster day? He did. It wasn't did. enough. It was. It was enough to get in the top twenty, which I did oh. top twenty, taking it got fucking chopped, which I was pissed about. Mm. Um. And then, yeah, Bradley actually came back for the top five, too. I mean, he was way out of it. I, I was shocked when I saw them show him any. I wasn't even looking at the leaderboard, and they showed him an 18. Like, here's a putt to get back in the top five, basically, after fucking Hubba Hubbard. Hubba, oh, holy shit, was that guy slow. Oh, yeah. Matt oh, my too. God. At both of them, that final group was fucking awful. Put them on the clock. Nobody wants to watch this motherfucker walk around the green for 20 minutes prior to each putt. I hate the way Hubbard putts, too. Yeah, he's got a short putter. And then he's and then he, yeah, he's hunched over so much, and then he steps off, walks around again. God, that was a pain in the ass. He's got a hole in his foot, man. Does he? That's what he was saying after the third round. Is that why he's so slow? I don't know. <laughs> well, fuck that guy. I mean, Jesus Christ. Um, so yeah, I do think there's a little bit, but main point this time of year, I do think there's a little bit something to it. I mean, two years ago. Uh, the last President's Cup, you saw guys just reeling off wins. That was when Smith started to win, like all these President's Cup guys. Some some were snubbed and some, I guess, who are playing in there. So I just think this time of year, you, it is something to think about. Yeah, sure. Um, all right, so we got a couple events this week. Yep. We got a, I really wish the golf season was over. I know. I know. It's too long. I'm looking forward to next year. Yeah, like, it'll be different. Like no fall. But I'm gonna keep. Bet, I'm gonna keep betting them. But isn't there big events in the fall next year? Yeah, but it's not every week. It's not like eight straight weeks. Yeah. You know. Yeah, this week's at least better. Last week sucked. Uh, Fortnite sucked. This week is like it's a pretty decent tournament. Uh, night golf will be nice. What's next week gonna be like though? What is it again? Zozo. They're going to Japan. I think some guys are going. Really? Yeah, I think some bigger guys are going. Like X? Yeah. Rory. Is Rory playing the CJ Cup this year? I don't he know. won he won that, but it's in Congaree now now. Yeah. He got he won it he won it in Vegas. Yeah, I mean that's a weird 
Congaree is a weird spot for CJ Cup. Yeah. Yeah, so I think those next two will be okay. I mean, Rory, I think he's still on this mission to prove how fucking great he is or something, whatever he's trying to prove. Isn't the, uh, the CJ Cup, isn't that like a Korean sponsor? It used to be. It's still on Siwoo's hat. It was at fucking Nine Bridges, Tokyo, wasn't it? Tokyo? I know, but the actual... Yeah, maybe I'm making it up. The C- CJ something. I thought I thought that was a logo for a yeah. bunch of Koreans. It's probably something. Yeah, really weird. Congress weird spot for that. Um, but this week, uh, much better, I guess. We at least we get some guys at the top of the board. You get Cantley, um, Sung Jay, and Homa. And I guess the difference here for me is like a lot of times it's easier to fade the favorites. This week, like it just happens to be that the favorites of this event both really do great as the event and are sort of perfect fits for the event mm-hmm. big time so it makes it a little tougher to completely <clears throat> especially Cantley. <laughs> yeah just because the bent thing and his course history first second second eighth he's playing great yeah so you got Cantley at seven sanjay at 11 and homa at 16 homa can fuck off of course yep the other two, I mean, yeah, have a great chance to win. I mean, what do you do with them? Nothing, I guess. I don't think Sunday's going to go back to back. Wouldn't shock me, but I mean. It's our 14. Yeah, it's not bad. It's not bad. I, I don't really want to bet the defending champ at 14, though. Yeah, I mean, either. I think I'm just going to keep Pepper in. It worked for us last week. Keep Pepper in the uh, 25 to 50 range, right? Mm-hmm. It really did. Um, I think so, too. I mean, I, I don't know where the best Tom number is. I think we can just kind of, I like Tom this week. And the thing is, it's going to seem like, and I don't want it to seem this way. It's going to seem like it's a president's cup overreaction. And that's what it probably is going to be for a lot of people who better them. But this is a place where I kind of circled him a while ago because it just feels like the perfect course for him. It's all about drilling fairways in this field. In his past 24 rounds, he's second in fairways gained first in approach and first in birdie or better. Yeah. All we need to do is get get that putter rolling like it did at Wyndham, and you got yourself a winner. Yeah, look at all the winners here. Every single one of them just fucking drills fairways. Nah, um, similar guy. Sung Jay, similar guy. Old Bryson, pretty I similar. I think Tom is Sung Jay. Yeah, he, he is. He is, but maybe he. I mean, I don't know who, how many guys have won two two tour events before they turn twenty one. Very few. It's like speed. Tiger. That's the one thing that I'm a little uh, trepidatious about. Yeah, but he's been playing professionally for a while, hasn't he? Mm-hmm. So in that case, he's bet. I mean, if he wins two by this age, he's probably. But he has he's the same profile as Sanjay, and um, he probably has a little more of that it factor than Sanjay, right? Mm-hmm. Sanjay's probably a little more polished around the green. Yeah, I would say so. Um, probably a better putter overall, but. Tom can go into stretches where, like at the window, where he just drills everything. Um, then, but approach wise, I mean, look at the look at his last five events on approach: four, five point three, three point eight, six point three, three point four. He's probably a better his, iron player than yeah. Sanjay. Off the tee, they're both they both hit it on a fucking string. Yeah, he's not as long, but yeah. that doesn't really as long as he's in the fairway. I mean. A little more accurate. He just doesn't miss fairways. He doesn't miss yeah. them. Look at his right. fairway game the past six. It's like 12, 6, 10, 5. Nine. It just, just hits every fairway. So looking at the guys who have won here, that's pretty much what they've done. I mean, Laird did it. Nah did it. Bryson did it. People are going to see Bryson and not realize who he was at that time, but yeah, that's who he was. And he's stalking to the fact he hasn't played this course? I don't think so. Yeah. Didn't stop him from winning Wyndham. And this time of year, I think too. And Wyndham's like a course history course. Yeah. So yeah, so is this. Yeah, so is this. But um, like last year, I mean, I just think at this time of year, you got to try to disregard some of those things. Like Straka, the big reason why is because he missed four cuts at the place. Yeah, that was hilarious. You were all over Straka early, and then I was all over Wednesday. <laughs> yeah. You you told me like he's never made a cut here, and I was like, ah, oh, yeah, that's right. But. You just got to play on the talent this time of year. Yeah, those corn ferry guys, they're not really uh, producing on the tour yet, just like we said they would. You get, I mean, these old, you get these 
these young uh, guys have been on the tour two, three years and the, and the veterans. It would get, I want people to pay for their fucking shitty takes, right? Nobody pays for their takes. Like how many people said Justin Suh is going to be the next great people are acting like he was Morikawa going into the fucking Fortnite. That's what people were acting like. Um, you know, and maybe he's going to be okay. Sure. He's not going to be great. He, he missed two cut, missed both cuts that he played in by a fuckload margin. Like we weren't even close. The only corn fairy guys produced in our, they're like 30. Taylor Montgomery, Burmeister is not even a corn fairy guy, really. He just no. went there through the, he's been a Euro tour player for years. Fucking Dietrich, he's, we've been betting Dietrich on the Euro tour for at least five years. Yeah. So the only guy who's really playing well is Montgomery. And you guys want to bet him at 28 to one? I mean, sure. He's 30 years old. He fucking, his stats are pretty good, but he's, I have no interest in betting him at 28 to one like people did last week. I thought that was crazy. He played okay. Sure. Um, not doing it for me. People were still betting saw at 40 after that hor- horrific miscut he had. He had another horrific miscut. Now he's a hundred. Yeah, an eighth there, 2020. <laughs> and then this is a place where actually profile is better for him than the last two events. Yeah. Is he practice here? I don't this know. Were, this is where more cow and X practice, I think. Yeah, it could be, but I mean the hundred uh I know I think Miracle and X practice at don't they practice at Shadow Summer. Creek? Yeah, maybe Summit. Yeah, oh yeah, some club, yeah. But um, but uh I mean the hundred on Saw is probably a better bet than the 40. I mean, it's definitely a better bet. It's not gonna yeah. win, but so back to Tom. I mean, are you uh are you looking for a number or are you just betting? I was hoping for 25 at least. I don't know if we're gonna get that. You gonna bet the 22? If I have no other choice, yeah, I guess. I was hoping I, I mean I thought they were gonna completely fuck us and put them at like 16 to 18. Yeah. And they didn't. 22 is still I guess it opened at 35 uh, on DraftKings and then it went down to 30 and now it's 22. Ugh. So I don't know what we're going to get 22, whatever. I'm not betting that much into this tournament and I'm not taking anyone else under 40. So if he's 22, so be it. Mm. I'm taking someone under 40. Give it to Aaron him. wise. Um, I just think he's a great talent here and off the tee, uh, looking at that and approach, he's been, He's been he's been on the, all these leaderboards. Um, 13th at the tour, 15th at BMW, 31st at uh, St. Jude, uh, gaining on approach to those events. He's got good history here. Uh, two top tens um, and a 14th, I think. What was the other one? Um, I don't know. I have a I, I have a gut feel that Wise is going to uh, contend this week. All good points. I can see it. I just went to school at Oregon. I just, I just think it's a hoping to get a 28, probably not going to, but I'll bet the 25. Yeah. 25 is too much for me to stomach. I don't think I'm going to do it, but I, I get what you're saying. I get what you're saying. Yeah. He's just, uh, I don't know. I get, I kind of just feel it in my plums here. You've liked wise in the past. I've never been really. I feel like every time I bet wise, that good things happen. He might not have won, but it's a I feel like it pans out. Yep. Get him could in the mix. Could happen. Could happen. Uh, just Tom for me under 30. Is anyone else that we should be giving some consideration to? There's not many guys under the, in this range, is there? No, the only other two are Montgomery. And you get Grillo at 35, but I think we have a 40. So we might as well just go into that guy right now. Yeah. Let's talk about him. I mean. He's playing, playing well. Um, is it, does it hurt clicking that button? Of course it does. Extremely. But we've learned in this game, you cannot make decisions based off of that. No. It's a good number, though, 40. Yeah, he's playing fucking great. Great. He's drilling off the tee. I mean, his approach. I, the reason I, I was skeptical prior to that um, is because his iron numbers weren't really they were just math they were yeah but last week they, he just was just fucking i don't is other stats updated now 5.7 yeah and that was putting which is crazy for grillo he, that was his uh seventh straight week well not included sixth straight week if you take out the uh, british of gaining two plus on putty 3.4 last week, 2.6, 1.8, 2.7, 3.7, 4.1. That's not that's not Grillo. So something's obviously clicked or he's gotten some some kind of tip and he's putting well. And if Grillo 
keeps the irons fire and putts lights out. You know, what's odd though, is, um, same thing with Keegan. Keegan's been doing the same shit too. Yeah. And, uh, Sometimes you see guys just make a switch. Your boy Wise, right? He's kind of made that switch too. Yep. So sometimes it just happens. And um, yeah, he lost 2.6 around the green last week, Grio, and that's probably a lot due to that one hole. Definitely. Uh, but off the tee too, 2.4. I mean, ball striking, 8.1. Yeah, they should have gave him fucking minus four just for that one chip. They should have. And he's been getting progressively better. Yeah, I think you can. I think you can win this. Um, is, it, is he? I don't know. If he, if he gets in contention, I mean, aren't we? Are we a hundred percent positive that he fucks it up, or just like ninety percent? I didn't think he was gonna fuck it up yesterday like that. I, I was confident he, in him. I thought he was gonna miss a shorty or something. I didn't think it was gonna be what he did, but that one hole, yeah. You got to come to grips that Grill is going to miss a six footer or two. Yeah, that wasn't wasn't even six either. Um, but like three top fives since July. Let's see what what has he done here. Um, thirty fourth in twenty twenty. Not much. He hasn't done much here. Forty seven, thirty fourth last two. I don't know. I, you just got to ride the form, though, man. Yeah, you got to ride the form. Um, yeah, not getting too crazy with course history this week. Um, but with him, yeah, I mean, sure, we bet it and see what the fuck happens. I mean, talent-wise, he's up there with, with anybody. So these Hispanics love the bent grass, too. Yeah, they do. They always have. I always bet Grillo on uh, – that's why I wasn't sold on him at first because of the Bermuda last week, but I always bet him on bent. That's why I had him at the 3M. Yeah. He came in second. <clears throat> All right, so uh, we're going to bet Grillo. And then uh, other guys at 40, you got Norin, Hoagie, Siwoo, Cam Davis up to 45 on bent grass. Dean, Burmeester, 45, Harmon, 45, Poston, Riley, all 45. I think a bit, this week is big about shopping around, too. These numbers seem just wildly different no matter where you look. Yeah. What, um, you, what about Cam Davis? I don't know. It doesn't feel like the right fit for me. No, but what if he take take something from the President's Cup? Like he was, he had a great President's Cup. He did, but uh, look at the winners here. Not a single one of them is his profile. Like ever, there's not even an outlier. True. Nah, yeah. can't lay. Was he similar to old Bryson? No. No. Um. Right. Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know. We missed the cut at Fortnet. Yeah, I can be out. It's fine. Just, I'm not feeling the course fit. Um, if this was <clears throat> a different event, then I would say yeah. But uh, yeah, all of his finishes. I mean, not, not much on the West Coast either. Yeah. American Express, he was pretty good, but uh, other than that. So I don't know. I don't think so. Um, I'm, I'm not feeling him either, so that's fine. I'm not feeling Burmy. No. Last uh, week was a great course for Burmy. That's the reason we liked him. Correct. Um, Harmon, Post, and Siwoo. Norin. No, no. played well on uh, Euro. That's a no for me, but um, Siwoo, I saw like a – someone said they saw a 90 or something. I don't know if that's been adjusted or now. That number, sure, I take it. But 50, 40, I'm not interested. So we talked a little bit about this guy earlier. How about Hoagie? All right. I like Hoagie. I think I'm, I might take the plunge on Hoagie. I'm not a Hoagie guy, but like he start, he was, he played like ass during the summer, but then all of a sudden he showed up at the three M gained 10.4 on approach. And he's been playing well ever since um, 10th of the tour championship. And then 12th at the Fortinet gained 4.3 on approach. Um, he's been putting better, uh, and I kind of can just see him uh, him contending here. He's got some good finishes, 14th, 24th, last two. He has a seventh uh, four years ago, five years ago. So uh, I like Hollywood Hoagie. You can't get a 50 on this, Prick? I thought we had a 50. Okay, 50 I like. 40, I'm not really so much. No, I'm not in at 40. I, I need a 50. I need a 50 as well. Um, I want to look at the data golf course correlation thing. And I know 
the, the leaderboard hasn't been too much of a crossover for Pebble Beach, but I feel like it should be, shouldn't it? Yeah, can't lay nah, they all play Pebble decent. Um, I don't know, one's coastal. Uh, yeah, true. I mean, I, either way, West Coast, I mean, place where you want to have a lot of accuracy. Um, I always forget how to fucking find um, TPC Summerlin. Okay, yeah. Familiarity we have. TPC San Antonio. Is there a KH Lee one? Yeah, twice. We have a 45 on Hoagie on that one site. Okay, not bad. Um, hmm. That's the number one is TPC San Antonio. Then you got Monterey Peninsula. That's um, that's that's in the Pebble Beach Pro-Am. Yep. Maybe there's something to that. So, uh, La Quinta. Yeah. I don't know. I like Hoagie. I, I feel like we get a, I feel like the trend so far has been to ride the recent form of all these guys. And I feel like he's one of those guys that is, is in that form. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Um, Hoagie 50, I think is a, is a very good number. Um, you said a lot like SEP last week. I agree with that. I think it's kind of a similar situation. Yeah, exactly. Everyone wants to take these young up and coming guys. They'll take these steady vets who have shown they can compete. And um, he's won yeah. before. Yeah. We'll take the up and coming guy in Tom Kim and then a bunch of vets. Yep. Um, <clears throat> a couple other guys. Well, here's a, another guy below 50 Davis Riley. You like Riley? I don't like Riley. I'm asking you. Oh, no, he can fuck himself. Okay, he's 45 to 1. He just showed a little bit of something, I guess, on his home course last week. Cool. Um, okay, uh, 50 plus. You got Pendrith and Dietry at 50. Um, Denny McCarthy at 50. Mav McNeely, KH Lee, 55. Anything there? Probably not, but I do think um, people like Denny and all these other events, like if this is an event he's going to win, this is probably it, isn't it? Yeah, I mean. Similar to not, right? You gain, yeah. a, gain 10 strokes putting. Just fine at everything and gain a million strokes putting. Can't lay did it here, not did it here. Um, yeah, I'll tell you one thing. We're not going to be on Denny's first win ever. No, or a second. <laughs> <laughs> I won't be on any of them, but sure. If you're one of the guys who likes betting Denny, this is probably the spot to do it. Yeah. But fifth, I don't see any reason why he's ever been 50 to 1 or 40 to 1 or 30 to 1. <laughs> and he still <laughs> continues to be so i'll still continue to be out uh who's the other guy you said i thought there might have been someone there i like oh i don't know i don't mind cage and i don't mind the um like i said the president's cup narrative i think these guys are it just helps i mean i, I do want to look into that um when they had the had the uh, one in australia like i think the next four events like after that had been won by people who were in the president's cup i think i remember that too people decided reeling them off it was like smith leishman yeah um and i Let, hmm, i remember this there's gotta be a way to look it up i think well the top three on the odds boards are all president's cup guys yeah and four out of the five the top i think they're internationals who would went through <clears> on them but like i don't think they were the top of the board type of guys I think they were just kind of like random like smith at that time i think um, what did he win? Sony? I think he probably was like 40 or 50 to one. So this was 2019. It was this president Cup was in Australia. It, it was uh, in December. So yeah, he would have won Sony. Yeah. So like it, and then I just looked at the number one correlating course. This was TPC San Antonio or whatever. So that's kind of interesting. Yeah. I don't like cage. And it's a TP, TPC and he's an Asian in Vegas. That's right. You gotta think about the Asians in Vegas. You gotta have at least a couple of Asians. Can't be two because they can't chill her out. So it had to be three or none. We have Tom. So I'm just gonna have Tom. Yeah, it could be an odd number. So yeah. Unless we can think of two more. Um Kitayama? No. Okay. Um he's American actually. Sure. <laughs> That's a story. nothing on uh nothing on your guy Pendrith or Dietrich. I don't bottles. like the course fit. No, I don't like the course fit. Yeah, okay. 60 plus. Um, 
Uh, you got guys like Sebez, Power. Here's an interesting one. I don't know where his game actually is. Is Mito? Yeah, I think I'm going to bet Mito at 66. Are you? I like the President's Cup angle. We like him on Bent. We've always said we can bet him on Bent. Whole world is on him forever. Now the whole world's kind of soured on him. Um, I don't necessarily think he's going to win, but I just think it's a nice buy low spot. Where it's it, a nice number. If he's in the mix and he's talent wise, he can win. Like, I, th- I think when he was in form, he's probably twenty eight to one here. Yeah, played Definitely. Presidents Cup. I thought he was. I thought he was okay. He was better than I thought he was going to be at the Presidents Cup. Uh, he won a singles match. No, I think he got his dick kicked in. To be honest, was it by uh, who was it? It was Colin. Yeah, that's right. See, I'm not. I I just I can't tell what it. Is he back or is he not? I don't know. I can't tell. Don't know. He's leaving. He's leaving, right? He, and he's also doing this weird thing with Neiman in yeah. uh, in, in Chile. They're doing like a match type uh, thing. I'm just going to fucking bet him because I don't give a fuck. I'm betting one guy in the 20s and everyone else is 50 plus. So I'm just yeah. going to bet him. I don't know. I'm not sure if I can if I bet wise. So right now I got Tom, Grillo, Hoagie, Mito, and then Cooch. We both like Cooch. Yeah. You want to you want to do coach? You can go for it. Um, <laughs> he played well at the Fortinet. He gained three point one on approach. Um, didn't putt. Didn't putt at all. How many three footers did he miss? Yeah, I was on him. He felt like he should have won that event. Yeah, I got on him live with you just because I was sick of you saying coach. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> seventy five to one, he feels like a Kevin Na type shorter hitter a guy. Just hope he gets hot with a putter. I feel like he's playing better now. He is. And I'm going to say, I said it once, I'm going to say it again. Everyone's on all the young guys. That old dirty dog swoops in and fucking steals a victory. Yeah. I like Cooch. Cooch is the man. It's a nice number. Um, 75, sure. He has win equity. If he gets in the mix, I trust him to be able to do it. There's definitely a course he can do it. Martin Laird won fucking two years ago. I yeah. Mean, and then you, get, you know you're going to have to beat Cantley. If Cooch gets in the mix, he's not intimidated by Cantley. No, he probably thinks he's a dweeb. Yeah. These other guys, I mean, you bet some of these corn fairy guys, they're, they're going to be intimidated by Cantley. Yeah, definitely. Like those young guys still probably think Cantley's cool. <laughs> uh, and there's another guy in this range who I'm interested in, um, Ricky Fowler. I thought it, he wasn't going to be very popular. But I, looked, I opened Twitter today and I saw like three straight tweets about Ricky Fowler. I was like, yeah, I think I'm logging off. Yeah, I don't know if I can get there for I need a hundred. What is he, 75? I'm showing 66 here. But I think I still could just because of my the way my card's constructed and because I don't know, he was top ten in his last start. I mean, do we do we think he's gonna suck forever? It's pretty now or never here. Like he showed something. It's not like it's blind. Is he, is he just gonna win? Maybe, and there's a correlation to why he should. That's another thing. It wasn't just randomly showed something. He started working with Harmon again, who he was working with when he was good. And yeah, now I just think should... it takes time, though. It does take time, but, I mean, how much time is he going to get? Well, he, he made the FedEx somehow last, last year, so he's got a full season left. <laughs> Plus, he's probably going to get the invite to all these other tournaments because he's popular. So he's still going to be gaining, <laughs> winning a ton of money and gaining – ton of points based on being in these big elevated events he's gonna be like the worst player by far but he's so he's still so popular with the kids he's gonna fucking get in yeah yeah um he is playing hitting the ball great off the tee though let me tell you holy shit when he is surprising okay let's just off the assumption that he was ricky again this is a perfect course for him yeah definitely has he done anything yeah he has some good finishes a sixth a seventh yeah, okay. I mean, he, he grew one in Phoenix. He loves Vegas, doesn't he? Phoenix is a three hour drive from Vegas, right? He won. Yeah, he does. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with if he's good. I just don't know if he's capable of winning at this point. I do hope I'll be happy if he does, though. Yeah, it'd be great. It would be great. They got to be a 70 or something out there. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure that you can get us 80. Um, I don't anyone know. else? 
No, I'm not going deep. Okay, this, uh, I mean, this, is, this could really be my card. Tom, 22, hopefully 25. Grillo, 50. Hoagie, 50. Mito, 66. Cooch, 75. Ricky, 75. For me, that's what I like. Okay, I got a couple things here. You mentioned Putnam to me earlier. Yep. 90. I like Putnam, 90. He's a couple top tens at the course, been playing really well, puts it well on bent. Um, top 10 in my model for some reason. Okay. He's been playing well. Um, he didn't play last week or he did? I don't know. Doesn't this fit basically what Putnam does? Yep, definitely. And then, uh, actually, there's another agent, Benny Ann or Jay Day. No. Okay. All right, yeah, that's it. I'm going to go Tom, Wise, Grillo, Hoagie, Cooch. Okay. Putnam finished 30th last week. Yeah. Playing good golf. Probably can't win, though. Yeah. 90 ain't bad, though. Um, all right, Liv, any thoughts on Liv? we got three minutes here. Um, tough event to bet here. But I'm probably just going to bet Bryson again. And lose. <laughs> Um, new course in Bangkok seems wide open. seems really long. seems like, you know, really state of the art. It almost reminds me of like a shadow Creek type of look. I don't know if that's, it's wicked long, man. Four par fives. It's par 71, four par fives. Three of them are over 600. And then the par fours, I think there's six of them over 480. That's fucking long. Yeah. Long 7, course. 600 yards and it's you said it's gonna be wet yep yeah and it's not tree lined i'm just gonna bet bryson again fuck it yeah i'm not incredibly interested in the event because one it's gonna be at 1 a.m eastern time that's when it'll start um yeah. the whole round is gonna be taking place while we're asleep and then i heard there's gonna be a lot of delays and stuff because it's the rainy season in uh in bangkok so I'm, um, you know, it is what it is. I'm interested in uh, Anirban Lahiri. I know you're not, but I saw a 35. I thought that was f- pretty fair. He's been very good in his first two starts. Uh, he's won a fuckload of times in the Asian Tour. Obviously, that you know, take that with a grain of salt, considering he's like the only good player um, in all these Indian uh, events. Um, but he's very, very comfortable in these types of courses. Very similar uh, in this in the climate. Um, Malaysia, he's won, um, you know, Thailand. So I just think him at 35, he's been good in the first couple of events. I don't really want to invest too much in the event. I think 35 to one is a, is a pretty decent number. Um, talk to my boy, Joy. I don't know how to say this name, Chikardi. He's uh, basically the only golf writer in India. He's a good golf writer. He had dinner with, dinner with him um, last week and says he feels really good. Thought his irons were a little off in Chicago, but he thinks – he sorted that out and he feels like he's uh, ready to contend. So. Yeah. He struggled in uh, Chicago, right? Yeah. I think his irons were all fucked up. Yeah. What about Wolf? Yeah. I actually don't mind Wolf. What is he? 20. Yeah. That's not bad. Um, I mean, you got to beat DJ and cam. So if there's, if there's one event where those top guys can lose, maybe at this one, like they're flying to fucking Asia. They're already there. They're all there. Yeah, that's true. They're, they've been there. They, bo- they both just won. So, like, maybe there's less urgency. Neiman's there. DJ's there. Uh, I, even Brooks is there. All right. Oh. Hmm. So, you like Bryson? I'm, I probably like Anirban. Bryson's, what is he, 25? 22. It's not bad. 16, I wouldn't bet. I saw a 16 earlier. No, but... no, no, no. I need a 20 plus. All right. Uh, Uline 66 seemed good. Good agent to a player, but yeah, for sure. 